Hello, welcome back to another All Gathered Up, the show that runs parallel with the Great British Sewing Bee. And each week we look at a specific skill or a topic that comes up and delve into it a bit deeper because they don't perhaps, well, they don't have the time to do it each week on the Sewing Bee. And, and some people are like, oh, I want to know more about that. Well, that's us and that's what exactly we do each week and we do it as well because we have Carol Elaine, Master Taylor, Couturier that joins us each week to help us understand those new topics or skills and help us to learn a bit more. Good to see you Carol, week five. Hello Stuart, I think we're halfway through now aren't we? Absolutely, I know the weeks are whizzing by aren't they? They sure are in a scary way. And it's boiling hot too. The sun is streaming in here. Are you, are you nice and hot in your studio? <laughs> Definitely. I've turned the pressers off early today and let everyone go home. Oh, you know, wonderful. Before the rush wonderful. hour started. Yeah, it's necessary. <laughs> um, so uh, I'm from sunny Suffolk. Carol's in London and we beam across the world for you to watch. And aren't we getting some lovely comments on the videos? Oh, I see you were busy yes. this week chatting away. I was indeed. I mean, I, I really love that that interaction. And it's so nice that people write in and they, they say, you know, whatever's on their mind, and whether it's got to do with sewing or whether it's got to do with the product, the, you know, the, the latest episode or, yeah. or you know, it's it just, just anything. It's a lovely forum to to just chat about sewing. Um, absolutely. And uh all over the years we've because we this is i think our third year we we've learned an awful lot of skills and techniques some have reappeared and we've gone over them again um and i know uh, during the first round for this week they had to make a, a what was it a modernist inspired skirt and we saw lots of gathers there well if you want to know more about gathers i shall put the link in the bottom of this video because carol did a superb demo i think it was last year uh, on on gathering didn't you carol I did. I remember that one very well. And, you know, that addition of that second line, right? So you have two, two gathering lines. So it, it it's, takes the risk out of it. If one of the threads break, you've got the other one. But also it, it, it concentrates the gathers in a more ordered way. So you don't have one line with gathers on both sides, which is, is hard to control. Yep. So you can see that tutorial. But for this week, because it was all about art week um, and some of those skills in sewing when you're more creative uh, means that you're going to have to do that good old technique called uh, uh, applique. Well, that's how I call it. I know uh, because uh, the, a lot of Americans like applique and, and you word it slightly different. How do you say it, Carol? Well, I it or do you kind of change? rolls off the tongue as as applique. Applique, yes, I applique. think. Uh, yeah, so applique or applique. I think it we. Uh, it depends on where you come from or where you put the stress on on which uh, vowel. I think mm. that's the way it is, isn't it? But uh, it's the same yeah. skill, same technique. So however you say it, it doesn't matter. Uh, is it a skill, Carol, that you like? Very much so. And um, w when I saw this first challenge, I was really excited. This is different. This is painting with fabric. You know, this is filling a canvas with fabric. And this is completely alien to what we normally yeah. do with a mannequin, where you're trying to make a shape to fit a, a, the human body. This is painting on a canvas and filling a canvas. Lovely and this is a idea. Whole different skill. Yeah. yeah. Well, this is the eye the eye works in a whole different way. Yeah, because you're you're not even making the garment at this point, so you're not doing any sculpturing as such, are you? As you say, you're you're making the fabric, mm. you're painting the fabric uh, to make it look wonderful. Then you're going to make the garment. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the the great painters and the and the artists we admire the most, they know how to fill the canvas. Yeah, you know, how to make that interesting. Now, that doesn't mean you plaster it with um, detail and and motif. It can be very simple. But um, it reminded me of a course I took. There's a, in London, we have what's called the London Drawing Group. And they do Zoom classes. And over oh, cool. lockdown, I took several. Did in you? Painting with paper. So, and Matisse did this a lot. Um, if you know some of his work, he did some beautiful work with birds. 
and it's very simple a blue background and white birds and he just took his scissors and he moved the paper and just cut non-stop so when you turn the paper you're now cutting something upside down oh or you're wow. cutting the right side of something or the left side of something it's very tricky to do so you've got, got to kind of see the whole of the canvas yeah before you put the scissors to the paper but this is what it reminded me of it was um and it was such a different challenge we've never uh, seen anything like this no and i just come from doing the show with ting on unpicked mm. and i have to say i was i was first of all as a as an, an artist uh, well a very amateur artist um but i also taught art as well i was very mm. excited for this week mm -hmm. and also this first challenge excited for because i felt that the criteria was wonderfully pinpointed if i can quickly go to this uh there we go because they were told to make a modernist inspired skirt so quite free there with the the idea that you can be inspired in so many ways but let's look at that and i've got my trusty pen here it was it was this that i thought was really pinpointed the brief and we haven't had this much over the season or seasons of sewing bee but you've got the taffeta fabric interfacing but you've got 10 fabric shapes so what was really nice was to see how they're going to use those 10 fabric shapes and how they're going to use applique and from the sewer I felt when I was watching it I'm able to judge that quite fairly because I can see mm -hmm. how they've used their 10 fabric shapes and then how they've applique so I think it must have been quite almost um I can't think of the word relieving for the sewists because right I could do this skirt I could do my gatherings because I've done those that's a good skill and now I can do this applique but uh from a, a viewer point of view I felt it'd be good to judge what did you think yes oh here's an interesting thought about the picture that they're given so you see a flat uh the skirt looks flat yeah. it's all 10 shapes and they're they're just lying flat well what happens really in effect what happens when that skirt is made and 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 all that all that folded fabric goes in on itself it's going <laughs> to erase point. it's going to yeah. erase half of those so this challenge was about understanding even though you're painting a big canvas you're filling a big canvas what happens to it when it concertinas yeah so you're going to lose you're going to lose that flat you know and things being next door to each other it, yes that's, it's going to fold in and also, as you said, uh, oh, that's not that camera yet. Let's go back to this one and <laughs> get going preview. away. Slight preview um, of what we're going to talk It's right. About. Um, but also, because you said you were painting, isn't it interesting that this drawing, they're all next to each other. There's no overlapping yes. or anything yet, is there? Yes. So that's quite a, a um, well, perhaps not so modernist inspired there. Perhaps they didn't want to give any clues away on on how to place those uh, shapes. Sure, I think, yeah, I think they were saying, here's your shapes, and you do what you like with them. Yeah. Now, did I see that some people said, okay, I'm going to use a circle, but I'm going to cut a bigger circle here and a smaller circle there. Yes, yeah. So they were, uh, they yeah. were allowed to enlarge the, yeah. uh, the shapes. Yeah, and, and people did tend to put them in isolation. They didn't overlap them to make new shapes, did they? Mm. Which I thought might have been an interesting idea. Um, but we, did, well, we didn't see that. Maybe you're no. right. They were guided by the drawing. There could have been. And, and also, mm -hmm. I'm, sometimes with these inspired rounds, if you don't know the topic, you're a bit scuppered. So I, I'm an artist, so I kind of knew a little bit about the, the modernist period. But mm -hmm. some sewers may not have done. They might have just taken modern to be literal, like, well, grey is very modern at the moment. It's the new beige, so I'll just have greys mm -hmm. and perhaps keep it kind of monochromatic as modern so that's a difficult one there because not everyone knows everything in art or any topic do they that's true and if it was about uh, modern industry or, or you know the, the modern way of life or modern yeah. tools or the modern customs and practice well that's one thing but if they didn't know the artists themselves and how they how their what their portfolio looked like then they would be a little at sea yeah, here and they so. would be thinking oh what's modern you know what's in yeah. the shops okay let's go into the 
uh, applique then because that if I just go to this shot uh, so we can see um, here we go uh, so we get an idea of what they were doing let's cover that one up that's the end result the the applique is, as you say, Carol, the painting. It's the adding of stuff to the actual fabric. So that was with the shapes. What is there a a basic, most fundamental uh, a way of approaching applique? I think that is very interesting to ask that because you have to understand the fabric that you're using as a base cloth. Okay. In this case, it was taffeta. It's a very perky. It's a stiffer cloth. Um, it has an active bias, but it, it's pretty um, taut on the straight and the cross grain. So it's a stable fabric. Um, it's ir mostly iridescent. Some taffetas have flaws, um, slubs that you'd have to sew over. So that's just understanding okay. your base cloth. And then most importantly, then second is understanding the fabric that you, you're appliquing with okay. so if you're going to if you're going to be appliquing a felt motif on taffeta well then that's going to be very easy why the felt is stable the yep. felt doesn't fray the felt is sympathetic to the needle going through and it takes that very easily um if yes, you're so, going to then so 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 the the felt then wouldn't show the holes at all would it uh because no and of, yeah, and it would accept the needle. Yeah. It would be very forgiving. That it wouldn't fight. You know, sometimes if you're piercing a silk or piercing a taffeta, um, a very springy fiber, the needle, if it goes in in between the fibers, it it pulls. Yeah. You know, it it yeah. doesn't go in easily. Well, felt has no weave, so the needle's going to go in very easily. Yeah. It's just going to find its way in. There's, you know, no cross threads to fight with. Um, so that's that's going to be easy. If you're going to, as some of the sewers did, and we saw the trouble spots, if they're going to use a, um, a, a more fluid cloth that frays and try to put that onto taffeta, you saw the problems, mm. right? Because yeah. they were trying to zigzag and cover up a fraying, you know, circular edge. Yeah. We're going to show you some tricks about how to uh, get out of that trouble. In a, in a minute, yeah. Okay. Now, from I do applique in patchwork because, as, as you rightly say, it's, it's, it's painting. You're laying fabrics on top of fabrics. Um, and I, I know a couple of approaches um, with my sewing machine. I suppose the basic one, uh, now you've spoken about fabrics, is, is what stitch to do. And it's, it's a zigzag. But I suppose there are many other types of stitching you can do as well, aren't there? Mm -hmm. Well, if you have one of these fancy machines with loads of different stitches, you know, a string of daisies, a yeah. string of hearts, you know, a, a complicated oh. zigzag, um, zigzag in yeah. a box stitch. Um, I, when I was setting up the tutorials, I realized that I'd lent three of my domestic machines to students oh, for this week. Don't worry. So sorry. I'm going to, I know. So I'm going to be appliquing, appliquing with a straight stitch machine today, yeah. which is which is fine. That's okay as long Absolutely. as you understand. Yeah. You know what? Um, you know the other thing is color. I forgot to mention that if you're appliquing an orange circle on black fabric, well, use orange thread. Yes. Yeah. Match the thread to the piece that you're appliquing on, and yes. that way your stitches aren't going to show. And also be careful of the bobbin thread because if you have orange in the, in, in the upper thread, you need orange in the bobbin as well. Um, yes, because you might see those little bottom thread coming yeah, through, uh, mightn't you? Yeah. That's right. Now, we're talking about zigzag, and the closer you put the length together, so the smaller the length, you've got width so, and you've yeah. got length, the smaller the width, Okay. So you want it the closer they're like together. That. Yeah. Okay. So that is the it's better if you can work that in. Now that all depends on the shape and the fabric you're yeah. using. But if like your first the first oh, yeah. line the zigzag that you drew which is quite wide. Yeah. Okay. 
Now that gives you a, a lot of opportunities for the fabric to sneak through into those yeah. V's. Okay, and pucker. Yeah. Yeah. So a satin, a real satin stitch is the stitches it's, are so close together yes. in length that you it's can't almost, tell. That's it's it. It's almost exactly. like that. So it then yeah. it then looks like a, a basically a block of colour. So That's it. as you say, yes. if you're using uh, orange thread on an orange shape, that will look that will look beautiful, won't it? Yes, and then you can adjust your length and your width. So maybe you don't need a a, a huge width. No, because your you could... fabric isn't going to fray. Yeah. That's correct. Absolutely fine. And if you're using like a felt, then that's all you need. If you're if you're using a, and we'll talk about that. If you're using a fabric that frays a lot, yeah. um, then use a wider, a well, wider zigzag. And then um, I didn't realize it when you showed me the um, the envelope with the pattern inside. Oh yeah, sure. Look at it. Gave them interfacing, yeah. so they gave them interfacing with the packet. Um, and I noticed that some of the uh, contestants used interfacing to back their motifs, others didn't. Ah, right. So because, so the interfacing then would have meant, because they, they, they were told they can use, uh, these were all scraps from the scrap bins in the corner, I think, weren't they? So some That's of right. those, some of those fabrics were, were probably too thin then so that's why the interfacing was given to them to firm up your mm -hmm. applique piece is that right yes they wanted you to back your applique piece with interfacing to give it that stability right. and also so that the needle again what we talked about with felt the needle would find a way in and it would have that extra support and yes. i think the one that comes to mind is lauren lauren had yeah. I think a black applique onto a green and she got into trouble because she didn't support her motives. Yeah, yeah. Uh, if I got a close up of it here. There yeah. you are, you see. Now I don't know if she used interfacing and if the interfacing was white, she might have been um, uneasy about that because, um, you know, the white might have shown. Because she's, she's using two darker colours. Yeah. Mm. yeah, so I suppose when you said about colour, um, I'll put that up there so I remember, you could argue, because this was a modernist-inspired skirt, because of modernism and the use of colour, they actually could have used contrasting colour, couldn't they? Which is kind sure. of what... Well, she just used the green to match that. So I suppose at some yeah. points, it depends on what you're making, doesn't it? Whether you want it to blend in and, and, and be a feature, um, as in what you're painting, or whether you want the thread to, to, to talk as well. It's exactly correct. And you could have used it. You, if you had your satin stitch well under control and, yeah. and um, it, it suited the applique and base cloth, well, then you could have introduced a third color, really. I'm saying you have to match, but that's if you want invisible work. But you could also use yeah. a satin stitch as a contrast. Absolutely. But I think this submission was really, it was a more uh, sober offering, yeah. wasn't it? Absolutely. And, um, I, and I think she said, I don't want to wear anything too bright and colorful yeah. because it looks it it's in age of, it's not age appropriate for me she didn't well, feel comfortable with that absolutely and if we go back to the group and this is what i was talking to ting about that actually uh modernist yes they have color but because of the shapes and the color you're you're close to it looking like a like a panto or a theatrical yes. garment or a or a kiddies garment aren't you so it's absolutely it's, so i can see from that point of view this is and tony's it's yes. modern because it's the, the of the way we see color now and classy grays and and black and that teal that's modern isn't it yes and there's a, a sophistication about that Absolutely. it isn't it isn't boastful you know it's you know notice notice the wearer yeah you yeah. don't notice the dress notice the wearer that's a very modern way of thinking about yeah. clothes you know it's almost a unisex idea almost you know the monotone idea yeah um i've got whilst we're talking about applique before we go into seeing uh, your work that's because 
Uh, Lauren was at one end um, of the scale, sadly the bottom end uh, in the rankings. Uh, and because it was the applique that kept coming back to, which was refreshing for us, as I say, as an audience member, I can see what Patrick is saying here with the applique and I can see what why that one's not so good and why that one's more successful. Let's take a Liz look at Lizzie's applique and you'll notice her edges straight away on how clean and smooth they are in comparison can't and she's you? yes now it looks like she's i can't tell from this photograph if she's used orange um zigzag she, on all her she has uh oh no she's used okay. orange thread on this one uh yeah. and she so orange and then on this one she's used purple so she has okay, used or pink right. pink and purple so she has used contrasting yeah. threads for sure That's, okay that's very but, clever. That's uh, extra points for that, for introducing a contrast yeah. color, I think. But if you, you can see the zigzag there, it's it certainly worked better because it's so smooth. There's no sort yes. of creasing or puckering of the taffeta anywhere, is there? No, and I think she's prepared her work very clever. I did notice that um, it, the equipment they're given is, they're using a free arm machine. Oh, so right. The, so the presser foot and the sole plate, that's all high above the table. Well, not high, but it's higher above the table. Yes, it's not so flat like, a, like your industrial. Yeah. yeah. So they're feeding their work upward. Yeah. And then it's falling down behind oh. the machine. So yeah, if you're working like that and you've got a small area, uh, you have to prepare what you're sewing very well. That means a lot of pins. Yeah. You have to make sure yeah. that that applique is very secure, especially yeah. if it's a circle. Uh, well, and that's well, and, and you've got that the gravity as well, because when it's hanging over the edge, that's pulling, and you you have to then try and put your hand underneath it to try and keep it flat. If you've got a bed, it makes such a difference, doesn't it? In sewing in general. Oh, yes, absolutely. And and you know this skirt had miles of fabric in it, so yeah. If you're turning, if you have an applique on the lower left side of the skirt, the all the rest of the skirt is to the top right. Yeah. And that has to fit into that small space yeah. in the machine. So and it's a tricky maneuver. Let's also not forget, Carol, uh, zigzagging on a straight line is easy, but zigzagging on a circle, that's a skill anyway, isn't it? Yeah. You have to, you have to understand how far to the right the needle is going to go. Yeah. Because that needle going to the right has to plant itself right on the outside of the applique edge yeah and so that's what you have to understand and if you don't get that so in that smaller piece the the navy blue piece with the um pink yeah the pink um that smaller one yeah that yeah. one there so the needle she, she hasn't got the needle to the outside of the applique so her zigzag is on the inside of the applique yeah see, so if I try and draw that outside. bigger, let's draw the bigger shape. So she's got her zigzags like this, doesn't she? But ideally, yeah. you you want it a bite into the fabric and a bite off the fabric, yeah? Perfect. Is and then you, you might, then as you get to the corner, yeah. you may have to walk the machine so that, and change and come down and then go right up into the point of that ah, right. shape yeah. with the right side of the needle. There you go. So yeah. that you just, yeah, yeah, you catch that point. Yeah. That's it. It's And that takes a lot of maneuvering. You've got to understand the machine and you have to yeah. understand how the needle is going yeah. right to left. And, mm. and that's a skill. Oh, let's clear that. Um, that's a skill for any sewer to achieve, let alone on a show <laughs> when you've got mm. what... Uh, four hours uh, of time so uh, it's 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 uh, it's not a skill that you can rush really when you're doing applique not at all now you've got 10 shapes and if you're lizzie and you're changing colors think of how <laughs> that adds time on yeah so. <laughs> yeah absolutely Okay, then, so are we good? Let's uh, go over to your, let's go over to Carol Cam and see let's, what you've got ready for us. Let's have a chat. Let's yeah. have a chat, okay? Love um, this. Oh, look, the sun is, uh, we had the longest day yesterday, didn't we? And uh, so. Um, we certainly did. 
it's we lovely had 19 to... and a half hours of, oh. of sunlight in britain oh, i couldn't believe isn't it that. wonderful oh look at that you've got some shapes for us okay I hope everyone can see this. this is yeah, it's doing. crystal clear so, at the moment, so that the internet is behaving. Oh, lovely. Thank you, internet. Thank you for behaving. Um, I've got a base cloth here. This is some taffeta, and we know how that behaves. It, it loves light, it loves to be draped, yeah. and molded and pleated. It's, and it's very, well, I was saying before, it's very taut. It doesn't stretch much. On it's the not floppy way. either, is it? It's not, it's not floppy, it's, it's pert. Yeah, it's got it some body a, to it. It does have a, a lively bias, so you have to just be careful about that. Now, uh, if I was going into the into the fabric bin to get shapes to applique, I would have chosen something which is as akin to felt as possible. Okay. So something that doesn't fray, something that is stiff on its own, and you plop yep. that on, and 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 it would. It, this is what I meant about felt being so forgiving. It's so easy to pin, you know. Yeah. It just goes in, and, and wherever you pin it, it just takes it. So, and I just found these lovely cloth. This is a, a more fluid felt. This is a, a, more, a stiffer one. But let's say I wanted purple on blue, and I chose this fabric. Well, let's look at the properties of this fabric. Oh, Lord. Now, <laughs> so yeah. this is a bit of a problem, isn't it? Yeah. This is going to be a bit of a bother. So we, we talked about understanding... Oh. The base cloth and understanding the cloth you're going to applique. Yeah. So what I've done is I've decided I'm going to do a circle shape. There's my circle. First, I applied some fusible to it. Okay. Before I cut it out, and I I fused a slightly bigger piece of cloth. Why did I do that? Because I wanted this shape to be a certain size. Yeah. Okay. So. I applied the fusible first, and then when it was all set, then I traced off my shape. So I, yep. I know the shape is going to be the right size. I, I learned that lesson quite quickly. You, you, you you can often go, oh, right, I want to cut out my shapes. And, and then trying to apply fusible to your cutout shape is a lot more of a faff. So just just fuse your fabric, then cut your face out, uh, your, 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 your piece out. I know that means there is a bit of wastage, but it's yeah. a more pleasanter journey, isn't it? It's a more pleasanter journey. You're <laughs> right. Now, I, I told you that um, I lent my domestic equipment to a few students who are putting yeah. a collection together. So we're going to do this um, using a straight stitch. And I, I'll, I'll just see how it goes. Now, you can... How, how do you know that you're following a concentric line to the outside of your motive? How do you know that? Uh, okay. uh, don't well, know. Hard. Your, yeah, it's hard. Well, your your soul plate. Let's see. Let's take that out. Your soul plate with your with your lines here. I don't know if you you've got a quarter of an inch, a half inch, three quarters. You can't follow these anymore. Why? Because it's covered with fabric. Okay, so that's gone. So the other thing you have is you have the um, presser foot itself. See, that's fine. You could do that. Um, you could start by just following the edge of the fabric. Now, I'm using a very long stitch here. Okay. So your presser foot is following the edge of the fabric, yeah? That's right. The yeah. outside of the presser yeah. foot is following the outside of the motor. Yeah. And it, but it's a bit tricky using this big stitch. Yeah. Because Cause it's it jumps hopping a lot. along at a, yeah. At, yeah, at a faster yeah. rate. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to um, narrow the stitch. And then suddenly this is a little bit easier to handle because yeah. it's taking smaller stitches as it goes. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm Ultimately, going to even dial it a little bit. And I don't have to turn the fabric as much because, no. because the stitches are smaller, so it's allowing me. I, I might decide, okay, do I like that? Is that, I still have the, the, um, yeah, the interfacing the is showing yeah. and that's not so yeah. good. So let's see if I can pick a different point. So I'm going to... Now try to find a different place on the presser foot. Now the presser foots all have a space that the needle can go through. Yeah. And that is um, you've just got to. They're all different. All presser foots are different. <gasps> Look at so that. I found a space and something that yeah. I can eyeball. Yeah. 
And oh my I've, lord, I've Carol, not, that's incredible. So it's good, isn't it? And that's I've not had impressive. to pin anything. And if you look, there's a, this is very flat and this is a bit puckery. I don't yeah. know if you can see that. I can, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Can. The, yeah, go back, okay. move that back so, again. Now, yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, so this this part let's see. Puckered there okay. and then flat there, yeah. 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 Yeah, so it's a little bit uh, I don't I'm not working the camera very well. Oh so yeah, I'll zoom I'm out a bit. That. Uh, no, that's right, I've zoomed out. There you go. I, I okay. can see it. Yeah, I can see you can see so, the difference there. That's you yeah. see? Yeah, yeah. that's just puckering. Yeah. the stitch is longer, so it's just puckering. Yeah. Whereas, Whereas that's smooth as a It's very smooth. You know what? And I I'm gonna you know, I'm not gonna go much um smaller with the stitch. But I am going to try to get a little closer to the edge. It's very tricky to do um, with a straight machine. If I was doing a satin stitch, this would be much easier. But let's just but, see how we do. But Carol, I, I'm, I'm now thinking um, we we oh, well. This is my from my you know very amateur uh, knowledge of applique. It's almost the stereotype to do the zigzag, but you don't need to do the zigzag. That is beautiful. No. No, you don't need to. Now, the other thing you can do is um, you can you can pin. You don't want to run over a pin, so you can you can pin this way, and just encourage everything out. If you're a little bit nervous, you can thread a needle. Let me just do this quickly. Um, it's all about that, preparation, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, well, this we've said this many always, times. Yeah, always going on about preparation. But my let's my say, dad taught me that. You met the um the the five P's. Proper yeah. planning prevents poor performance. He would always have six oh, P's. I like and that. That, that, I he, like he, that. He did teach me six P's, and one of them was a rude word. So <laughs> you can probably guess where that is. <laughs> uh, proper proper planning prevents rude words. Poor performance. Rude words. <laughs> so. If, you, if you've just got a couple of seconds and you want extra assurance, you can do some a simple X stitch around your motion. Yeah. These stitches don't have to go in any particular order. No. It's, you, you, it's your basting, you isn't it? Yeah. It's your basting, yeah. And you can go up and down. You can go, you can make it across. You can follow, follow your, your, your motif, whatever. But setting it up like this, either yeah. with pins, with a needle and thread, and everything, then it's going to come out nice. And then but, all you need is a little press, and you're well. You are. I can see it already. That's viewers. Look at this section here. It just flat as a pancake, and um, and I have to say, I I just thought always applique zigzag. Um, but actually, that is much nicer. And because a zigzag on a circle applique just looked odd. It looked, um, it didn't fit well. Isn't it interesting that they no. all did zigzag? Because it's almost the stereotype of applique, a zigzag. But actually, yes. no. Yeah, exactly. And you, you see this railroad track of, of you know, hopping across. Like I know, that, yeah. zigzag. Now imagine if that was done in purple thread to match the <gasps> shape. Absolutely. You wouldn't yes. see it. No, no. So, and the closer you go, then the less you have that problem. Yeah, yeah. Of seeing the prepar the preparation and yeah. the. Yeah. So but th both that these also fabrics that fabrics are very. It shows your okay. skill, though, Carol, because that is <laughs> so close to the edge. That is phenomenal. Yeah. Um, but as you yeah, say, you tough. find you you um, uh, let's uh, come back to this one so they can see us. Uh, you find yeah. you practice. Mm -hmm. So I know yeah. the whole point of all gathered up is to develop the skills so you can do them better. So I know they didn't have the time, but you would practice. You would cut out that small piece and you would practice your applique on a rough bit first, wouldn't you? So you could work out where you're, right, where am I looking on my presser foot? Where, where, and if you've got a domestic machine, you, and you've got a, a, a more um, higher end domestic machine, you move your needle don't you you because yes. yes. we can do that can't we yeah. right you try it so mm -hmm. you've right I'm and and I this is where I always use my edge of my presser foot Carol found her own 
little hole where she was measuring up. But if you've got a clever machine, just move your needle closer to the, the edge of your presser foot. So move it two points to the right. Is it close enough? No, move it another point to the right. Um, so that is a, a valuable tool. And I use that on my mm -hmm. sewing machine all the time. I'm always moving That's, the needle. Oh, right. So interesting. So in tailoring um, and couture work, I only use a straight stitch. That's it. I, yeah. And so my brother, industrial, it just does one thing. Yeah. Um, if I'm, and I usually make buttonholes by hand, so I don't, you know. Of course. I don't need yeah. to zigzag for that. But um, that is interesting. I, I know that, that uh, newer machines, domestic machines, have loads of features on it to help you so refine yeah. every technique Absolutely. that you're doing. Um, and, and in it, fact, in the old days, you just tur tur you, in the old days, you just turn the hand crank, and and yeah. you, you maybe you wouldn't use a press foot at all, or the, the foot pedal at all. You just yeah. manually turn it and um, line everything up right. But you, with those abilities. Oh, it's it is phenomenal, it's and and it, and it is worth it. Now, um, you you don't have to spend much money before you get that needle moving function, and I think that's more important to me than the fifty thousand stitches that comes with a more expensive machine, because actually, mm. I'm a patch worker. I don't really want those fancy stitches. Um, and yes, they do wonderful things. And you could make really pretty applique. Like you say, you could choose one that does, you know, shapes and floral things and stuff. But the needle moving helps you to get a lot more accurate without uh, having to lose your guide of the presser foot. Um, so, and, and that's what you were, you were trying to say there. But you, you had to find your own guide. You couldn't move your needle there, could you? Not at all. And it's, it, it, it is all what they call rock of eye. You know, it's yeah. just, it's instinct, it's intuition. Yeah. You, find, you find ways to make a clear run at something. Yeah. Um, and uh, it is a bit more manual machine. Um, but the, I mean, the hands learn. And if yeah. all you're, if we're just straight stitching, you and I, we're straight. That, that's what we're asking yeah. our equipment to do yeah. for us. To have that extra refinement is great. But, um, but there's manual ways of doing it as well. Yeah. So you just have to you you just have to know your equipment. It's like knowing your fabric. It's it's the same thing. Indeed, indeed. Um, anything else you're going to show us at your 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 sewing machine there before? No, I I no? think that's just about it. I mean, yeah. you, we you kindly referred to our uh, previous tutorial about gathering, and I think yeah. if we can if we can put that in, that yeah. that would be really could, helpful. Could but this that. was it was such a different. I don't know how I would talk about you know, how you fill a big canvas or in reverse, how you take a big canvas and make something smaller, which is what we're going to see next, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's, let's just look at, go back to the pattern challenge then. And as we've mm. seen, so we've looked at a, a plique. I hope that helped. You can put in the comments, any questions, um, mm. but just be brave with what you're doing and think about, as you say, the end result. So if we go now to the groups and we see how they've painted theirs, then that's when you, uh, it's a great term to think of it. Um, how are you gonna paint it? Are you gonna use contrast thread? Are you gonna use a zigzag thread? Are you gonna use a zigzag stitch? Or are you gonna use, you can, because if you're painting, you could be as bold or as, as discreet as you want to be. And some of them with their painting, they have put them everywhere and have filled up their mm -hmm. their canvas, as it were. And some have been mm -hmm. a bit more, I don't know, stylish and have put them off centre or or on the bottom third. Um, mm -hmm. Did you have a preference of which sort of style you liked? Which ones you felt? <laughs> well, oh, right. Yes, this is not... Uh, well, yeah, I like the more the, I like the more sober op offering. So I like Tony Tony R. I I really like the grey shimmer, but I I like that in principle. I liked his idea. Oh, Tony's. I've got that's um, Tony W. He, Let's have a look at Tony W. I know he was closer. trying to achieve, and it, it it all went a bit wrong. But but I liked his, I liked the concept. Okay. Yeah. It and okay. It didn't it didn't work, but I I appreciate it. Now that is a really good base color. Isn't um, it just, yeah. Yeah, but it doesn't speak. It, it doesn't no. shout out. It doesn't leap off the canvas like, it, it, you know, it was supposed to. But how could he have improved that? Maybe by doing 
you know, 50 shades of gray, that would have worked, you know? <laughs> uh, yeah, maybe some pops of charcoal, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Is it color or is it, mm -hmm. or is there nothing that can prove it? It's because of, the, of what the judges wanted. They were, they yeah. were saying um, it had to be abstract. Was it not abstract enough for the judges? Yes, and that's true. But it, 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 I liked, I liked, the idea in principle, yeah. as I did Lauren, and and then I liked uh, Tony uh, Beanie Tony's very All right. much because let's I love his color scheme. And let's go to. Uh, I haven't got Tony Beanie's on here, but I have got Lauren's. So let's have a look at Lauren's, which we touched at at the so, beginning. Uh, again, see that to me that really uh, that really spoke, although it was a sober contrast. Yes, it wasn't as she said a childish. No. you know, result. Yeah. So I, I liked that. I thought maybe if she m used different shapes of motifs, that would have made that more yeah. interesting. But it beautifully gathered into the waist, lovely bow. Um, yeah. I'm sorry, I'm not picking the, the real vibrant ones. No, it doesn't, um, no. It's, and then I... It's, go on. Yeah. It's, and then it's I all... Liked, uh, yeah, go on, sorry, it's my fault. Go ahead. <laughs> it's it's it, when it when it comes to these inspired challenges you are you 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 you, you take you like what you, well, you like what you like we all have different tastes mm. don't don't we and and it's such a broad spectrum here isn't it mm -hmm. so if we go to beanie tony's which he wanted to do flame uh, a story of flame yes yeah uh, i haven't got a close up of his but you can kind oh, of okay but well, we can you, see you can him kind of see it the there left. yeah yeah yeah. And like you said in the beginning, I wasn't all for the, the pantomime effect yeah. at all. I, I didn't think those garments would be useful. Um, no. But I, I did agree with the, with the judge's winning pick. I did agree with Lizzie's. Yeah, there was there was As just the something name. about it. And if I show a close up of that one. Um, oh, that's Lauren's. Uh, I, it was it was everything about it. It was it was the the, the wonderful gathers and the bow, but it it was the, as as you beautifully put it, the painting of the canvas. I think they were just in a stylish way in the in is it in the mm -hmm. lower half or the lower we often say in mm -hmm. thirds. That's it. Is it is it in that bottom yes. third? So it and they're kind of they're kind of creeping upwards in that bottom bit. It's not too much in your face and slapping them everywhere, is it? No, not at all. And it, it looked uh, appropriate. It looked useful yeah. as a garment. And then she did integrate that uh, leaf shape at the bottom, which helped, you know, balance out all the circular Absolutely. motifs that she, she used. But as we nice said, job. and as we could see, her applique was compared to others and this is when when we got close-ups we could go ah oh, yes i can see that and I, as, mm -hmm. as i say mm -hmm. as a viewer i really enjoyed the critiquing here at that point so i can see what they're saying i can see why this is better when you look at that and then you look at them poor old tony w's applique it, where you can yeah. see yeah. The, the 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 puckers of the taffeta almost and or yes, it getting and all the, and all the creases yeah, and yeah. the hairs of the fabric, the hairs of the fabric sneaking out. So yeah. I, maybe he didn't pair his, maybe he didn't use the interface no. and didn't. And I saw the way he was pinning. He was, he was almost pinning as he went. He didn't flatten it out, pin it or baste it, and then put it in the uh, machine yeah. where it would have just sewn itself. Because there is uh, another type of applique, isn't there? Um, which some of my patchwork friends use, needle turn applique, and that's even more of an exquisite approach because it's 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 hand done, and you're mm -hmm. you're turning the the edge of the fabric over and and hand sewing and getting a bite of that and a bite of the backing, so it turns it over, so you then get a nice edge because the raw edge is slightly folded under. There's no way you're going to be doing yes. that here, though, are you? But because uh, that's not a in whole minutes, different no. skill. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but no. it's yeah, it's 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 knowing. I suppose if you were doing this again, it's knowing right. What what, what are these things I could do to help? Know your fabrics know what it does so he if he was rummaging around in the bin he would have should you know gone oh i 
look for firmer fabrics. But they are. You learn these things, that don't, don't you? Yep, yeah, that, yeah. yeah, that don't fray. But if you've got a color scheme in mind, and there's a mad race for these oh, uh, trimmings indeed. and fabrics. Yeah. And, and so, you, yeah. you, you know, yeah. if you, you've got to look quickly and, and, and grab what you want. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I would have been interested to see what, because that was the, the, the one place that they could help the contestants out. And that was with the scraps that were in the yeah. bin to use. They, if they put in some felts, that would have been so yeah. interesting and easy to cope with. And, and maybe they put in the harder, more floppier fabrics, knowing full well what would happen if they chose it. Mm. Those dastardly producers. <laughs> right, let's go on to the transformation challenge, which I absolutely loved. I don't know about you. I know Ting got a bit oh. upset because he was like, oh, they were cutting up crochet this last week. Now they're cutting up canvases this week. It's like, what's, what's going on? But I thought... It was, I mean, look at those there. They wanted, oh, they, so so they is... wanted to, um, Leeds Arts University, fine arts students, take one canvas and turn it into a garment, but it had to have some sort of sculpture to it. That was all it was. So Esme and Patrick were obsessed with the sculpture. They didn't say it had to have lots of sculpture. Um, and, you know, so not having, not necessarily means it's the, the best if you have loads of it, um, which I think was one of my arguments later on in the discussion. But they wanted to look for sculpture. Look at those there. So there were some stunning sculptures, weren't there? This is fantastic. I mean, I immediately thought, oh gosh, get out the walking foot, get a jean needle, get a second yeah. jean needle, yeah. you know, because you're going to be sewing through paint and yeah. it depends on how gummy it got um, that, yeah. you know, you're going to break threads or you're going to... Um, you're going to break your needle if you if you you know saw this last episode with the crochet where if you uh, push the fabric uh, through too fast or pull yeah. the fabric from the back you're going to create this jam up with the needle it's going to fall in the wrong place it's going to break so you need backup needles and and a you know a 14 or a 16 in, in your machine and um, yeah. and then just be prepared for it to not be happy with what it has to go through and I saw, you know, this is true when you're setting up something which is so heavy and then it has a lick of paint on it. Well, your pin's not going to go through it at all. Yeah. You, you, you need staples or tapes or you know, something heavier to, to control it. But um, if you made anything out of this and it worked on the mannequin, that is sculpture. Yeah. You've sculptured it. If you've done anything yeah. with a canvas full of paint it's a sculpture yeah so now this is this you know what is that what how much sculpture do they want which absolutely is just, what you've just asked and, true and, enough and this is where a bit of the the argument came certainly on on me chatting with ting that did poor old tony w for the second time he was bottom was he harshly judged compared to so he was eighth he came bottom compared to lizzie's uh which i can't i haven't got a picture of but it's basically the apron with regard to sculpture because i know you say anything on the mannequin is sculpture but is there more striking perhaps that should have been in the in the criteria striking is there more structure in or striking structure in tony's compared to mm -hmm. uh the groups what do you what would you say yes. compared to lizzie's sorry yeah yes absolutely absolutely and that little kimono sleeve was very well done on the fold and he set it in beautifully and he's yeah. got a, a, a pleat at the bottom it looks like okay he used uh, dressmaking techniques for this yeah you know with the collar and the stand and everything but um there's more sculpture in that piece yeah. than the the overall yeah definitely yeah. Um, so I, I, me and Tig certainly felt, you know, uh, certainly a bit harsh that he was at the bottom for that. Because mm -hmm. look at, I mean, those sleeves are, they're, they're standing up as well, aren't they? They're not mm -hmm. flopping um, or they're not down. Mm -hmm. I, I know uh, I've got a picture of Vicky's here who was one above 
uh, Tony. Well, see, this is where I know sometimes we've like, ooh, with the judges' comments. And I think I, I think I texted you and I'm like, oh, Esme, you could have yes. said something much better there. Um, but it's like, well, it's still a lovely garment, but it's it's got a raw edge at the bottom, whereas Tony had binding on his. And yes, exactly. It, it's, it, I know you've got to have judges to judge for that very reason, but it's when you think, well, oh. when you ask for I a garment this... to have sculpture, it's like, well, one person's sculpture is another person's huge, massive sculptural piece. Yeah, you're quite right. I agree with you 100%. And um, I think what the judges forgot about was the brief and I think they got carried away yeah. with the canvas. Yeah. Yeah. So Tony's canvas was not as interesting, but he did execute sculpture in a better way than Absolutely. the two than the tunic and the old yeah. yeah. So he, he made a much better job following the brief, but I think they got carried away with the colour on the canvas. Yeah. But when you look at Tony's here, Tony Beanie, I loved it for a different reason. Yes, it's still sculptural, but it, it's not as much sculpture as, as, as this and this. But that doesn't mean it's not as good, though, does it? Exactly. This I would have given Tony Beanie second place mm. because I really loved this. Yeah. It was architectural. He would have, he would have come second. Um, and I, it was a play on the man's tailcoat. Yeah, I didn't crisp. So I, the fa the fact that it was somebody said one of the judges said it was too long. Well, no. Yeah. Um, the prop. Barmy. The goal here was to use as much as the canvas as possible. Absolutely. Was and that in the? Exactly wasn't it in the brief? Did. Was it? It was to no. create a garment. Yeah. yeah. And this one I really like, and I like the proportion um, very much. So it wasn't. Yes. Uh, a tiny torso with a long tail it was yeah. and he used a lot of the canvas and in order to make those two big pleats um fall into place with the rest of the garment you you needed some yeah. length yeah so yeah, yeah was, that it, was it, i i thought it was beautifully done i and he finished the sleeve edges the yeah. armholes off too so he so it was sculpture but he controlled it and he had a bit yeah. of couture finishing it um, I think I think it will be interesting to see what the comments will be from the viewers on on what where they thought that you know the the standings for this one because as I say you don't it often is the case even when me teaching kids think right I'm doing a drama piece this or an art piece and I'm being assessed on uh, the topic I'm going to chuck in every type of skill or I'm going to do loads and loads and loads so yes I can see why uh, asthma's um, here, or oh, let's go to a wider one. Actually, uh, was stunning because of the of the the sculpture there. But just because you have lots of a sculpture doesn't make it the best, does it? It it will obviously will be eye catching for a different reason. But just because you've got more of it doesn't mean it's going to be better. No, exactly. What fascinated me about this was her the the perfect union of her design with the canvas with yeah, because it, it was a very spirally there was a lot of movement in it wasn't and there i the more i looked at this the more this thing started to twirl and spin yeah. and move around and dance and i she just married this perfectly it was phenomenal so, yes, don't get me wrong I, it was phenomenal I, and yeah, it came yeah. first so i can understand i can understand why but it doesn't mean just because something else had less uh, uh, sculpture and was more discreet didn't make it you know as bad no, so I, and you're, I, you're right to you're absolutely right to separate separate that criteria yeah um asthma was st staggering because of the way she uh used uh her, her design work to yeah work with the with the with the canvas M mia um chose a yeah. very busy uh pattern and she decided to, you know, just accordion pleat her fabric on the top and then um, follow that through yeah. with a drape on the other side. And it just worked out very easily. And 
I suppose what I admire about Mia's work, the, the more we get into the competition, is how risk averse she is with mm. her work. Mm. So she's so it's it, this isn't the safest garment to wear. In the sense that asthma's is very safe to wear because everything is covered, you know, mm. and, and and the straps work and everything is integrated and it's a proper garment. This was a little bit risky because you know it was backless and there wasn't. Mm. A, a lot of coverage on the sides, but on a front view, it had masses of sculpture, and it looked very lively because her canvas was lively. Very and we busy. can't, yeah, can't can't move on without talking about Lauren's because I, I love this one as well. Um, this I, is it, it, isn't it. It's just that the design. Mm. As as I was watching it, I was like, "This is something like from Gladiator or Game of Thrones." Mm -hmm. It was. Oh, that's the back there. Um, uh, yeah, it, it, incredible for ninety minutes. And her, she used applique very effectively in this because yeah. she had these shards, these shards of fabric, these shapes, and she just lapped them and top stitch them just like we were talking about yeah. appliquing with a straight stitch. And um, and also what you were saying about choice of fabric, piece. knowing your fabric. Mm -hmm. she This was mm -hmm. firm, it was going to stand up. So therefore this whole design was going to be mm -hmm. a doddle, wasn't it? Totally, totally. She just chose her shapes, lapped them with yeah. a, a couple of folds, which Esme really liked. And, and then she had her you know, the d displacement of shapes. So some rectangles, some triangles. Yeah. And um, this was really beautifully done. And I like, again, it's a more, it's a somber statement, isn't it? Yeah. Which is kind of in her vein now. Um, but let's move on and finish off with the um, made to measure because as as we talked about with inspiring i was kind of it, it it was going up and up and up for me as an episode and for some reason i just felt the this whole round was a bit of a it mm. felt a bit flat it felt like it was missing something don't know about you but they had mm. to create an outfit inspired by the surrealist movement and mm. and i've talked about this on the other show i've learned that lesson quite early on as a teacher if you give a lovely open brief which actually the kids will often love you go say go and make a play about christmas yeah we get to make a play about christmas mm -hmm. within 10 minutes they're they're stuck because there's so much to choose from so for this mm -hmm. as a brief where do you start you're not making a evening jacket where it's nice and pinpointed so you can then go and choose mm -hmm. a pattern you've actually got to somehow yeah come up with a pattern work out what shape or garment you're going to do then work out how it can be inspired by the surrealist movement it was a huge brief that's a great metaphor about yeah writing a play about christmas because it is everything is possible absolutely and, and then and then it, you know what it's like your mind is full how do you how do you refine how do you work yeah. you know you work your next step out without wasting time and I suppose you have to think about, well, this is a chance. This is a virtuoso segment of the competition. Mm. You want to stand out. What, is, what are other people likely to be doing? Yeah. What, how, how do I really understand surrealism? The, the word absurd comes up. It's got to be wacky. It's got to be something that's completely unexpected. But yet, it has to be successful. So yeah. if you're going to do something absurd, People are going to have to get it. And it's in fabric. Now, art on a canvas is completely different. So how do you take that? How do you take a flat canvas, which we all know, and, and, and we, we love some of the works, you know, the Salvador Dali's clock, yeah, you know. Yeah. How do you animate yeah. that in a garment? That's yeah. really tricky. It is. So it is. I agree with, with you. And certainly it's then, you then go down that aisle, like what I, what I learned very early on with kids, when, when I did say, it's certainly in art, right, we've, we've studied Salvador Dali for the last seven weeks, now go away and make a picture of a final piece. You end up coming back with all the tropes to do with that. So as we then saw, classic case, let's go to the transformation challenge. Um, oh, no, that's the trans. I need made to measure. Um, you end up either having something very vague or then write 
let's make it Salvador Dali like this, slap some yeah. eyes on it. And then it becomes yeah. a bit too, too, too simple or too basic, which is horrible to say. It's, it's, so it's, a, it's such a hard round, isn't it? And this was, it then, was this is it contrived or too, too right? Oh, it's got to be surrealist. So I'll do this, chuck some eyes on. Yeah, that it's so hard. I wasn't I, sure about. It, it, yeah. I know, and I. It, that's a, a nice. Uh, it's a good way to present it, you know, to make a simple kimono with a very rectangular sleeve. Um, that is, those eyes are visible. They were placed yeah. well. Talk about where to put something on the canvas. Yeah. If she had her arms up or down, you would see those. So very effective there. Mix of cloth, really interesting. Mm. But it basically, it's a top and a skirt with a couple of eyes on yeah. the sleeve, isn't it? It is, and, That's and it's what it then, is. and you, because it's obviously inspired by, but would, would, how many people would get it? I suppose, actually, some, many people might get it quickly because you, 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 you hone in on the eyes, but some of the others mm -hmm. are inspired by like a, a very small thing, aren't they? It's, it's, I wouldn't want to have judged this round at all. It would no, be really hard. And, and, those, and those motifs, could, they could have been flowers as well. Yeah. It could have been a flower. Yeah. It could have been in the shape. It, it, they could be a spot on a fish. We're not sure, are we? We're not really no, sure. No, it's right. It's right. It's, <laughs> so I, I felt for the, the sewers, they did an amazing job. But I don't know whether, because it was then so wide, it then was either here, there and everywhere, or it was, let's just do the clocks and eyes of Salvador Dali. And uh, um, I don't know, it might have been me. Um, so I, I felt like even when the models were walking down the runway, it, it, it didn't, f it just felt a bit flat. But I don't know about you. What did you think? Any, yeah, I, anyone I, that I stood felt, out? No, I, I really felt the same way. I, um, well, I'm not sure, actually, because, I mean, for example, this one looked, um, Lizzie's looked like a contemporary garment. Yes. It looked yeah. like something that it, if, if you, without the embroidery, without the applique, yeah. this was just could be a modern outfit. Yeah. Um, this well, was, it, I was really confused by this round. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I, I, then I just go back to the mate, the, the, you know, the execution. Yeah. So, well, um, let's have a look at the execution of, of Tony, because you said uh, modern. Tony Beanie was very modern and kind of tongue-in-cheek with this idea surrealist he, he went for that idea of uh, i think it was matisse wasn't it um uh inspired and and has made a, a dress and has put this is a dress on it clever a very clever idea very funny um and it, in many ways <coughs> i like this because as you said the brief was so wide yeah and the i suppose the Temptation was to copy, yeah. Um, to copy certain works, but he didn't do that. If the contrast was a bit higher with the lettering, I think he would have done better. It was hard. You had to strain to see what, yes. what was written on there. Um, but I, I still, I, I really giggled at this. I thought, <laughs> well done, you. Well, it's. <laughs> It it certainly was him, and and when he was talking about it, he just thought, yeah, clever, I like it. Um, and then another one that was quite open, and you know, well, I'm going to be inspired by the word surreal, so I'm going to make a cloud. Was Mia? So not necessarily, you know, going down the route of the artists of the surrealist movement. Mm -hmm. You had a different type of a surreal, a cloud. Yes, exactly. A very simple slip dress that you could make in an hour yeah. or less. And then this idea just wrapping loads and loads of tulle around, making some pom-poms and, and putting them together. She missed the center front of the hem, which that needed to be filled in. But it, to me, the idea of a cloud, is it's, that's very clever, beautifully done. But again, this is being very safe. This is yeah. taking something, yeah. doing something simple yeah. with it to great effect multiplying yeah. it and there you are so yeah and i think this is where yeah. as i say that, that's the, it's the annoying part of the brief you know hone that brief in make it easier for the judges to judge 
give them a bit more specific. They could have they could have done specific things, right? We want you to make a, an outfit inspired by the Surrealist movement, but it must have this, this, and this in it. And then, yeah. then the sewers yeah. can go, okay, right. So this is a high fashion garment. Mm. This is a, this is a contemporary piece. Yeah. These are modern shoes, <coughs> yeah. modern shoes, modern hairdo. And, the, and I mean, I, I'm a bit annoyed with the repetition of the pom-poms, I gotta admit, you know, yeah. on the shoes, yeah. in the hair, in, enough is enough. Um, uh, but let's go one thing we well, did see is a massive variety. We did, we the did. interpretations were yeah. across the board. Absolutely, and that's what you <laughs> get when you have such a wide brief, don't you? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But marking that is, is I, as I say, I wouldn't want to have been a judge then. Uh, let's go to Tony uh, W, because he was obviously <laughs> bottom for both rounds. He needed a spectacular make to, to save himself. And um, I thought he was getting there with it. Let's go to the long shot so you can see it. But it mm -hmm. did just lack something, didn't it? Yes. Yeah. He chose two very tricky um, oh, elements to work with, yeah. velvet and feathers. Um, yeah. It, yeah, it's difficult, yeah. isn't it? I felt for mm -hmm. him because you, you can kind of see what he was trying to do, but it didn't, that sort of, is it a lot of bolero? Would you, bolero? How do you say yes. that? A, a, um, a bolero the, jacket over. With the feathers. It, it gets a bit lost, yeah. doesn't it? Yes. It's it's a it's an interesting costume, isn't it? But yeah. it doesn't reflect the brief as, as as well as well the others. Yeah. Um and and it's a shame because I say some when the when the uh West Africa week when the models were walking down that catwalk they I felt the models were they they lifted some of those garments. They took them to another level. They were they were walking down when they lifted their arms up. The the garment suddenly spoke and sung, and the model is trying to do that here, but it still feels a bit flat, doesn't it? Yes, she's not selling it, and I know what you mean because I think the models are very good. Oh, they uh, are absolutely, season, and as I say, they can they they can but, turn a mm -hmm. garment that looks a bit ropey into a stunning garment just from how they sell it. And I and I just felt every time these models walk down this one, it just oh, what was was, yeah, it, and it because as I say, that almost look. I love those these side bits, these panels. Are they joined th at the at the back? But yeah, could she could she I, not I rise her hands up higher and and yeah, and exactly that work it. Yes, he's done some beautiful things with that sleeve. I'm, I'm just working it out. But the rest of the, the rest of the um, garment just sort of drips, doesn't it? It's, yes, yeah, it's, yeah. Because you flat. look at that sleeve. The sleeve is there, but this looks like is it? Is it? Is it? It's not going round to the back, is it? Is, is it joined into there? Yeah, I think it must be a, a separate piece. Because it's hats, not on the full not, circle. It's, it's I, not flapping where you can put your hand no. inside, is it? It's not like a bell. Yeah. Do you call them a bell sleeve? No, it seems like it's a very tight sleeve, but with yeah. this with this bit attached. It'd be interesting to see how that how that worked. Um, it's almost like a an hundred and eighty. It's a full circle that's bagged out, so it's a hundred eighty yes. degrees, and yeah. then it's just sewn from elbow to wrist. Um, and then we'll finish off with Garment of the Week because that might be an interesting one. Garment of the Week was Fauves and it was the black with the white lace. And that shocked me because I thought uh, Asma was going to get it for the transformation round, for her sculptural, you know, that, that one that we saw. Yeah. Um, yeah, exactly. This is a very clever mixture of leather and lace. It's a great story. Um, oh, absolutely, yes. Simple simple circular skirt with square edges right and then she just yeah. outlined the edges with the lace and then put a second run of lace but i think she sandwiched that in then that's a very tricky thing to execute so she yeah, done so it really well she got the skill there didn't she for sure yeah yes. that that must and have I been the hardest that, part that yeah yeah deceptively um yeah Tr tricky to get uh, the bodice to do what it did so it was it rose up on one shoulder didn't it yes 
and did. then it, it had a very clever gathering. So I don't know whether the bodice is really is that a bit bodice with an is it is it zip. is it not a bit crumpled or crinkled? Is it? I don't know whether I would have preferred it a bit flatter. Is that not a bit baggy there? Well, I think it was a beautiful contrast to the straight ah. skirt. So ah, by right. by pleating and, and yeah. gathering that up, that and and so the leather. Look how it takes the light. Yes. Look at that. Yeah, those those See, panels there really, are striking, so aren't they? Effective. Yeah. Yeah, and then you've got the contrast of the the gathered, the ruched top, yeah. the bodice, and then that very flat skirt, which then falls into trumpets because it's a full circle. Even though it has a square hemline, it's a it's a you know you cut a circle for the waist, set that in, and everything falls into those trumpets. Okay. It was it was surprisingly. Uh, effective at the end yeah. so you it can understand a showy piece but right so you could understand why the judges then awarded it as garment of the week yes and i think the whole look on the model with with the dms and and then <laughs> yes. that you know um, the the cloak of lace over the face yeah let's go to that, that long um, shot again look at that thrown back. <laughs> yeah oh yeah. wonderful well there now, we look are look at that look go, go back to that oh, picture just go yeah back to yeah that picture. of course yeah now let's talk about sculpture, huh? Look at that. Yeah. You see? Yes, yeah, so you've it's got. It's moving. You've got that layer, and then it ripples, and it goes behind there. Then you've got that one, and another layer there, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And yeah, then it... you've got the this. You've got this. The harder sculpture, the leather, and then the softer sculpture. Yeah. The embellishment of the lace. And then that piece on the head, you know, that that just that veil that. Yeah. sets up its own yeah. sculpture well. so it's subtle yeah it's subtle, you have but you it's have, taste it's really tasty you've made me appreciate it because i say before i was like <laughs> why was this garment of the week uh so you've helped me understand <laughs> that much appreciated yeah. so, well there we are we've we've gone out oh, we've got over yeah. an hour well all this talk but do you know what <laughs> i'm not worried about the time because people love the conversation they love listening to the <laughs> the tone of the conversation your analytical expertise coming through as we talk about what works what doesn't and 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 listening and, and the thinking processes people love watching it so i'm hope you're mm. hope you're still here watching if you are right in the comments uh whether you agree or disagree or what you liked and 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 the reasons why and i hope the applique helps uh for future projects mm. i'm doing applique very soon um, have I got it here to show? Right, I should have thought about this. Um, mm. Let's have a look. Right, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> um, have I got a picture? It's there picture? somewhere, Stuart. Have I think I got... it's in the third drawer on the left. Oh, it's, it's a bit of a, a state. So <laughs> I, I am making... I, did I show you last week? I don't think I did, did I? Um, uh... We were all expecting a lace shirt, weren't we? Oh, that is still in the making. <laughs> so, uh, sadly, not we'll this wait. week, but next week. We'll but wait. what I am working on... No, I haven't got a picture of it anywhere. So I'm working with um, some... Uh, on Zoom, every Saturday, uh, me and a group of sewers come together. And it's a lot of friends from America. Uh, so some are in Seattle, some are down in Texas. And we're all doing a patchwork project where we make 12 blocks and we're then going to send them off to 12 in our chat. And each one is going to get a block each and then I'm going to get 12 blocks back as well. But we're doing a lava lamp, classic lava lamp. You know it? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. And so we're patchworking a lava lamp, but it's done by... Uh, foundation paper piecing uh, so it looks nothing yet but this is this is the bottom of my lava lamp this is a little highlight mm -hmm. there and 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 because I'm uh, got lots of America uh, there's Americans involved I thought well my lava lamp will ha have some Britishness in it but okay. you know the lava lamp your liquid that goes up yes yes well the pattern there we go. I found it. Can you see that? Oh, yes. 
And so that's the lava lamp. So I've done the base. So uh, you can see this is the table. So that strip there, yes. uh, it yes. will be this bit there, okay? Yeah. But this bit here, the blob, is done with applique. Oh, so okay. I've got to decide how I'm doing my applique. Well, I was going to do zigzag. So I've learned something today. I'm not, I'm definitely not doing zigzag. I'm going to use <laughs> a straight line applique. Why not? To, when, I, when I do my blobs and I've got to choose the fabric. Well, now I've also learned I'm not going <laughs> to choose a floppy fabric. <laughs> I think I might find a firmer fabric. Um, and I might actually, now you've said felt, I might even find some felt and, and do it with felt. Why not? Yeah, mm -hmm. so learned a lot. Lovely to, really lovely to work with. Mm -hmm. uh, learned a lot today. If you like in, uh, foundation paper piecing, it's a fabulous pattern. You can go on, now you've seen it, you can go on and buy it. Mm -hmm. But um, So I'm doing that every Saturday. So uh, I might even be able to have a finished lava lamp in about six weeks' time when we finish the series. But next week, oh, I gosh. will be wearing a shirt Definitely. I've cut out the pieces. I've been taking pictures of it because uh, I want to make a film for it on the next vlog. So uh, I will be wearing a reused oh, table cloth out of linen uh, as a shirt. <laughs> so until then, um, I think we will say goodbye to everyone. Happy sewing. Happy appliqueing. Thank you, Carol, for your time, as always. Oh, thank, you, Stuart. thank you, Stuart. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, talk to us in the comments and we shall see you next week for another version of All Gathered Up. It's Kids Week. <gasps> what will we be talking about, I wonder? <laughs> Little, miniature, absolutely. <laughs> Thanks very much and see you next week. Cheers, everyone. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye, everyone.